part of it. The woman pledged $2 million to Maricopa. She got to, after we all left, and she took control, she wins on the dollar. We had sent 500000 She never sent the next $1.5 million. She's, she buys a few billboards. She, she defends the law. It, was, it's, it, it, it shouldn't be called defending the republic. It should be called defending the Sydney Powell. All she wanted to do was focus on with Howard Finkelbaum, or whatever his name is, defending Sidney Powell's law cases. It had nothing to do with doing anything out in the world that actually, not the stuff that we're doing, driving audits, driving investigations. She wouldn't spend one penny on anything. It was all just, the only thing she'll spend a penny on is anything that involves defending the lawsuits or the, or the bar actions against her. So it's a big, to me, it's trying to look like a big charade that she's doing as, as little as she can out there in the world to help our cause. But on that basis, raising the most money she can. By the way, it's a for-profit. It's not defending the republic. It turns out to be for-profit. And they're oh. paying themselves stock options. They've, they've arranged themselves stock options. Well, who's themselves? Is, who are themselves? Is, who's in it? <laughs> well, uh... Is Howard the... You said Howard. Yes. What's his last it's, name? Oh, uh, it's a Jewish last name. He was on one of the, he's the constitutional guy who was on her team. He was part of some of the filings. He's the guy who filed. By the way, it turns out Sidney files some of those things that did, those filings that were so bad that she put your name on. She didn't even read the filing. Howard wrote them, and they were terribly done. And uh, Howard's also the guy this spring who in her, who, who made the filing in her defense on her libel action where... He basically filed, and then it was this very damaging sentence that's like, well, no one should, I'm Sidney Powell, no one should have taken me seriously, what I said seriously anyway. It was a terribly constructed, remember how they roasted her back in like March? Yeah, I think, um, I think she's, I think she said something about nobody would expect it to be true. And it was a poorly worded phrase, I remember looking at it, that, was that she was saying that she was expressing her legal opinion based on facts, but it was the opinion that she was referring to, it was poorly worded. I, I didn't have anything to do with it. I just saw it in the media. Yeah, it was. I know that every li li libel litigation, that that's one of the defenses that you're saying, you know, you have a whole bunch of different defenses, and that's one, especially for a lawyer. But it was worded particularly badly, and that was Howard. And here's another thing to know about Howard. Howard, until October of 2020, Howard was Hillary Clinton's attorney. What? Howard works for Hillary Clinton. Until he when? Cleaned. What? Until when? <laughs> like very recently before this election, he wow. kind of switched sides. We caught him going around snapping pictures inside the place of people's papers and sit that they're on people's desks. He would, so at Sydney's instructions, I got a little bank building, a little. <laughs> We caught him sneaking around taking pictures of things on people's desks. We think he's working with the other side. And we saw the file. He filed the, res the responsive pleading to the libel argument where he had that terrible sentence that was used to excoriate and mock Sydney. And he also is the guy who wrote those terrible complaints that Sydney didn't even really read, but that she, she signed her name to. But I've learned from other lawyers who were involved that Sydney did not even, the ones that had all these typos and mistakes and, and I, the, those pleadings that she, she had not even read them according to other people who were on her staff and they got filed and that's what she signed her name to. Just FYI. Yeah, and I'm the one that got blamed for it and I didn't even know my name was on the things. So if people, if the feds are investigating me, Sydney, look, it was all I could do not to drop a dime on her. I thought it was the right thing to do, but I did, I did make it known in the right places. Uh, but, uh, but, I mean, I didn't have knowledge and I consulted a lawyer because all, because did I have knowledge or what? But I sure walked out the door. Within a week of leaving, more facts had come in that made me think, holy shit, Sydney's just running this as a scam. She's raising this money. It's secretly, it's for profit and there's nothing, and she gave herself stock options. Have you ever heard somebody do one of these things and give themselves stock options? Uh, I've never heard of, I, it's not anything I've ever been involved in, so I don't know anything about it. No, <laughs> so I wouldn't be able to comment whether it's right or wrong, but it does, the overall picture that you're painting is pretty, is pretty bleak. It's really bleak. Yeah, so I, won't, I walked out the door, I won't have anything to do with it. And to be honest, Lynn, 
you're the first person other than Mike and Joe that I've talked to this way because, uh, I mean, I, I haven't said anything. Meanwhile, I know she's out in the world. She also twice got drunk and, and really very directly tried to get me to bed in front of other people. And she got really hurt. And she wrote me love letters and this kind of nonsense about how hurt she was and stuff. And then when it all snapped and we walked out the door, she became super vindictive. And all she's done is go around for six months and, and raise and make up stuff about me and Flint. I've uh, never, I've, I, she was here for that period of time and she came back for a brief few days. I didn't even know Sydney drank. I didn't see her drinking when I was, uh, when she was here. Around you guys, she's this whole, this, uh, that's a whole big act. This whole evangelical thing. That's just for your crowd. Well, Sorry, she, to but... she told me she was love Jesus. Well, that may all be. She plays it up when she's around your crowd. When it's when she's not around your crowd, it's a different woman. I got you. Wolf in, or wolf in sheep's clothing. I'm not saying that. I just think she's not, you know, well, all people, she's, actually what I started thinking, Lynn, was when I, she was acting so baddy. She was acting like a menopausal woman, but she's too old for that. But sometimes I'm sure you've been around women of a certain age that they act baddy and you think, I'm not going to argue with a person. I just want some distance. I want to get, I'll give you an example. Her whole problem in Florida so she opens these things like Defend the Republic in Texas. And then we've said, that, well, she decided to open one in Florida and sort of to, to compartmentalize off everything that happened. So department, so, so she would been, got it organized in Florida or formed it. And sort of a few weeks later, got a letter from the Secretary of Agriculture of Florida. And for some reason, Solicitation licenses are managed in Florida by the Secretary of Agriculture, which is a very powerful position here. And there's some lefty woman, <laughs> perfectly polite, and it said something like, I know that you're operating in Florida and raising money, but you've not yet registered as a chair as a, under the license to solicit money. Please do so if you pay $1,500 uh, uh, to make up for the past and do so, we'll just go for it, drop this and go for it. Well, in my book, you say yes. Hold on one second, Patrick. I got my, I got to let my dogs out. Hang on one second. Come on, puppies. Come on. 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 Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Just another day in dog paradise. Well, you, you, you did have dog paradise. I thought very fondly from the end of, a, of our couple of days together, and I thought, it was, it was, I thought you were terrific. It was you a pleasure to meet you. I had never met you before. We spoke the first night you got here. I asked Sydney what your role was, and she said, well, Patrick just flew, the, provided the jet plane for Mike and them. And then you left, and so I assumed you were being a very gracious taxi driver, so to speak. Mm, there's more to it, but Sydney never knew the whole, understood the whole thing. I'll, uh, hey, uh, so I wanted to ask you though, are you, uh, so, so back, I'm back on Sydney. She, it was, I thought that she was losing her mind. We got that letter that, where the woman offered for 1500 bucks, hey, I see that you broke the rules here, just pay me 1500 bucks, set up your license, go for it, we'll call it quits. To me, the answer to that is, yes, ma'am, I won't let it happen again. Sydney, no way, you Sydney pal. I've been named one of the top five lawyers in the world. I'm not going to admit to making a mistake. No, we're going to fight this, blah, blah, blah. Well, because she did that, that little thing blew up into this whole investigation. Now, I haven't even heard about it for three months, but the last I heard three months ago, there were a bunch of people starting to look very hard at her. And that could have all been averted if she had sent a check for 500 bucks. So that's the kind of decision making she was doing a lot that made me think this chick's going crazy. She's as pleasant to work around as the Meryl Street character in The Devil Wears Prada. And then when, when she finally said, no, well, you don't get to look into 
all the money that's come in. You only get to look at this 800000 that I've sent to Naples, to a bank in Naples, Florida, for you to operate out of. Mm. It's when we all said we want to get as far away from this as we can. Mm. And I think it's perfect. I almost... Uh, based on that set of facts, I did not have enough reason that I felt an obligation to call the authorities. But a week later, I learned something that it wasn't 15 million; it was at least 20, maybe 30 million. And even since, so anyway, I think it's a, so. But what she's done for the last uh, six months, I've never spoken this way about her. But, uh, you're the first person, other than the Flynn's and I, talk about this. But she spent six months trying to get everyone in the evangelical community to cut me out. I won't appear with Patrick Byrne. She made up, she, I heard that I poisoned her. I heard that I drugged and date raped her. I've heard crazy stuff. And she's just, that's it. That's all I can say. I literally, I've heard well, there's somebody, there's part, so she gets with people and starts rumors. One is like that I poisoned her. And another is that I drugged her and date raped her. It's the crazy, you know, what can you say? So it's I, a support. I just, I mean, I'm flabbergasted. I've never heard anything like this. I, I don't. I didn't know Sydney before she came here. I thought she and Mike were coming down here to work on finding evidence to support her lawsuits. I didn't really know what the people were doing. I knew she was doing drafting of lawsuits, but you know, I just was trying to be hospitable. I mean, it, I thought it was the patriotic thing to do. I had the property and I was never really sure when, when she got here on a Friday, she said, Mike's coming on Sunday. And I said, Mike Flynn? And she said, yeah, I'd never met him before. And he came. And I said, how long is he going to stay? And she said, I don't know. And then, of course, they stayed several weeks. But, you know, I, I had the property. I had the size. I, I didn't mind him working. I tried to be nice to him. I helped a little bit if I could. They, uh, Doug Logan helped me look into a computer. And I was trying to get into our fight back domain, and we couldn't. This guy Hancock, we found out. Well, Doug said somebody had hacked it. I took it to an independent uh, company and they found that Hancock had hacked it, and then we later found that he had stolen our donor list. So you know, I, 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 all of this stuff is kind of rolled out on me over time in terms of having concerns about Sydney and some <laughs> candidly, listen, concerns about Mike. And I've tried, to, I've tried, Patrick, I've reached out to them to talk, and Sydney doesn't. She's promised to call me. She never does. Mike doesn't call me. I, I've asked him to talk to me. I did not like the I did not like the Vernon Jones endorsement. I know who Vernon Jones is. I thought he was inconsistent with Mike's uh, character, as I understood it, and I raised that with him. I was very disturbed about the prayer that he gave out with uh, Hank Kuhneman from a faith standpoint, and there were some other things that I started to learn that it just set off alarms. The, the prayer being the one where Mike said the legions. Yeah, well, that, yeah, I think the seven rays of light and the legions. He yeah, said it was a Catholic, Catholic prayer, and it's not. He lied about it. And then he told me he did. He told me he did, he told me he did not have any affiliation with Pegasus, and that's a blatant lie. Pegasus. What's Pegasus? Yeah. Pegasus is a company that's. I think Apple just sued him, involved in spyware and phones. And I asked Mike about it when he was telling me, you know, we're in different circumstances, because Mike charges a lot of money to speak. I don't like that, but that's his personal right. I don't Mike think he's a patriot. Mike charges money to spook? I'm sorry? He, Mike charges money to spook? To, to speak. Oh. I've heard, I've heard twenty five dollars to $50,000 to speak. I don't mind anybody making money, but when you're fighting for your country, usually you sacrifice, but that's his choice. But I thought he should disclose it to the people that were coming to these meetings so they would know what the speakers were being paid. I do too. And I raised that with Mike. I mean, he never really talked to me about it other than to say, well, we have different circumstances. And I said, well, I, all my money's in the land. I can't, I can't take a handful of soil to the grocery store, but I'm okay. And I said, I know you went through a rough time for a few years, and you know, I know uh, that costs a lot of money. And uh, then I said, well, you made a million dollars or something from Pegasus in 2016. He said, you know what I was talking about? It's fake news. That's not true, Patrick. Why would Mike lie to me? I don't know anything about it. Never. I don't know. Uh, but I've never had anything but super, had him super honorable in my dealings with him. Well, then Joe, Joe Flynn connected me with a guy named Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson was all hot and bothered about me 
publishing the whistleblower's uh, transcript. And I read him in a heartbeat as being a CIA or a deepest state operative, and it turned out I was right. Well, how did Joe Flynn know him? It's a and, then, and, then, and, then, and then Tracy Beans wanted me, was one of the people that wanted me to run for chair of the South Carolina Republican Party, and she had a big function. And I went down, asked her if we could sell Win with Lynn T-shirts. She said no. And then she got on the stage and she spoke. She didn't mention my name. Mike got on the stage and he spoke and he didn't mention my name. Now, I wasn't hurt about it. It just struck me as odd that someone was running for chair of a county that would not have anything to say about the person that she had urged to run for chairman. And Mike had, uh, by that time, I think, endorsed me. She called me when I was on the way home and told me that people at the function were very angry because they wanted to hear me speak, and I didn't. I said, well, you didn't ask me. I didn't. Yeah, I don't take this stuff personally, but there's just a series of things. People that write for some of Tracy's stuff have been very attacking of me, Brian Cates. Uh, I don't see Mike ever defending me. And when Vernon Jones said that I was un-American, had made my money illegally, and was a racist, all of those things are false. There's not one shred of evidence to support them, which tells me Vernon Jones <laughs> is the person that's un-American, made his money illegally, and is a racist. I raised that twice with Mike. Mike never responded. He never called Vernon Jones out about that. So it just bothered me. Something's not right right now with Mike Flynn. I don't know what it is. I've tried to talk to him. I know there was involvement. Joe Flynn was the person that hooked me up with Ricky Schroeder, who loaned $150,000 to fight back sometime around November the 18th or 19th of 20 that pushed us to the $2 million to get Kyle out. I raised the money as quickly as I could. And then when I am falsely blind all over the country, if not world, by saying that I left the boy in jail so that I could grift off of him, that's such a blatant lie. Mike Flynn knows better than that, but he did not come out and say a word in my defense. What in the world is going on with Mike? I, the first time, the only time I've heard that claim was the other night on CNN, or not CNN, fought Tucker. Kyle made a point in a way that told me he'd been coached. He may, I'm sure you've seen it now. He made a point to veer in his interview over and make this point that Linwood left me in, but almost like he'd been coached to do it. Oh, I, listen, he had to be coached because it's a lie. Once we raised the money... John Pierce, who at the time was representing him as the criminal lawyer, I never was. I was doing, had signed on to help him with defamation after the criminal case. He told us to stand down right after we made the bail, that they were going to do their own fundraising, so Fight Back stood down. We took everything off our website. He said he was going to handle the defamation cases. I said, here's a, a letter of withdrawal, and you know, I just, I wished him luck. Uh, and then all of a sudden, I understand Dave Hancock got involved. Well, that's a, that's a dot that's interesting because Hancock was here right before Mike was here. But Mike was here in November. I'm sure I, I talked to him at times that I was busting my butt to try to help Kyle. And Mike Flynn sat silently. But Mike Flynn's written me all these nice notes telling me how he'd go to war with me and take a bullet in a firing squad with me. And, and then when Vernon Jones came after me and then Kyle Rittenhouse came, came after me, Old Mike Flynn got out of the foxhole and ran. Something's not right with Mike, Patrick. Well, and I tried to talk to him about it. He won't talk. You, you mean in the last week you've tried to talk to him? I, he's, I have raised this by text messages over a course of weeks or longer, months. How long has Kyle Rittenhouse been saying this bad stuff about you? He, well, he got out, the verdict was, I think, Friday a week ago. And yeah, he, he was, got out, the verdict was around noon, and then they were promoting an interview with him that night where he must have done the interview right after the verdict. And then it went everywhere. All the Mockingbird media picked up on it. It's been a massive campaign, false smears against me. And here's my alleged foxhole buddy for the second time running. Mm. So I don't know. And then I, then I connect the dot that Joe got Ricky Schroeder involved. And then I got information that you and Joe had a, wanted to approach the Rittenhouses after he got out on bail to raise $5 million for him through the America Project. 
Like the name Kyle Rittenhouse has never came out of my lips until last week. I got week. a text message from Joe that says it's not from you, but from him that where he was trying to set up the meeting. Well, I never I don't heard say, that. Patrick, I don't say something unless I have reasonable factual Joe, evidence to support it. You were saying Joe Flynn was trying to set up a meeting on behalf of the America Project. It doesn't say that in the text, but that's what I was told, that it was you and Joe that wanted to meet with Kyle to try to raise him $5 million after I had made his bail. Whether that meeting, I don't know that the meeting took place. I just know, that, and then there was a confirmatory text that Joe sent. Didn't mention you, didn't mention the American Project, but it was consistent with the information I'd been provided. I've never heard a word about it. Or, or Kyle Rittenhouse in the context of the American Project. No I had work. the impression from your text today that maybe you had spoken with Kyle since the verdict. I've not heard. I've, I, I've never even, I've paid zero attention to this. It was clear to me that it was self-defense from the day it happened, and I've paid zero attention for the year since. And a week ago, I tuned in on it and said, oh, great, it's going to be this guy's going to get off. Other than that, I've never talked about Kyle Rittenhouse with anyone. I don't think I've ever said the name until a week ago. Said the name aloud. So I, I'm not worried this is coming from. Well, listen, uh, my from you know, it's, it, it, I don't, I don't, I don't discount the possibility that information I got was inaccurate, but it was from a reliable source and it was confirmed at least in part by a text message from Joe. So I just don't, Patrick, I don't just go out and say something. It took a lot for me to to discuss Mike and and Sydney, and and, and your your name was mentioned because of the information I had about the effort to talk to Kyle. I don't know anything about the America Project. I just know generally you have it. Like I said, I know you wrote a book. I know y'all did a movie. I don't know what else y'all are doing, but I just know this, Patrick, there's a lot of money in this audit movement and this whole uh, movement to, to look into 2020 or to fix things going forward or whatever it is. There's a lot of people giving money. And I, so I'm looking over here going, not, maybe we are. Maybe we ought to have an audit of everything and show people what they got and what they've done with it, which seems to me to be the right way to do it. That's what I did with Fight Back. Fair enough, but just for your the guy who runs the Maricopa Audit, Doug Logan, did put out a statement about all because there were a bunch of people, including Sydney, running around claiming raising money for audits. For Maricopa fight. and claiming to be raising money for it. Fight back, well, fight back got uh, Christina Bobbitt at OAN. She had a group called One Vote, One Something and right. wanted me to go on and try to ra help her raise $150,000 for the Maricopa audit. Fight back, the board voted to pay to donate $50,000 because we support the audit. And then I put something on Telegram about it. And I think in a few days she had $150,000, $60,000. So I knew there were people raising money. I don't know how much y'all paid. I think Mike told me that y'all put in like $5 million. I do have a text Correct. from him on that. So you said that again? I, I have a text from Mike that said, I believe you and he put in $5 million into Arizona. That's correct. A million from his group and a $4 million from our group. The, so well, the thing that bothered me is that Doug and, and Logan, Doug. Doug Logan was in my house with Mike Flynn. And then Doug Logan is the head of the audit. I thought Doug was a fine Christian boy. I didn't know his experience. I wasn't sure what he was doing with Mike. I do know he helped me one time to try to get into my computer and said, I think you've been hacked. And I had it turned over to independent investigators. And then Doug's cyber ninjas running the audit. I have heard from a reliable source involved with the audit that there were some very serious mistakes and omissions made by Doug with respect to the final audit report. That bothers me. It makes me almost think that the audit was a scam to get money, delay, and discourage people from investigating 2020. Have you ever heard that before? Has there been any concerns raised in your mind that somebody might be doing that? Uh, <coughs> close. And the same concern crossed my mind when their final report was tepid and watered down. However... Having talked to the senators involved, the hardcore red meat senators, Borelli, Wendy Rogers, others, they tell me, because I was really curious, and I said, did Doug, why did Doug, because Doug told me he'd been ordered to leave the word fraud out of the report and to make it as tepid as it was. 
And they, when I met with them, they said, no, 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 we're the ones who made Doug do that because this is so devastating. We didn't want his report to be saying fraud. We want the attorney general to say report, fraud. So we're, his report, we instructed him to be make it as bland and just fact, fact, fact as you can make it. The attorney general has been begging the Senate, turn this over to me. I want to get criminal charges going. And they were holding the Senate, the attorney general off. Now, this is all directly from these senior senators in Arizona telling them this over lunch. They were holding the AG off so that they could, once the AG put his arms around it, then it could all get swallowed up and no one would know anything. So they said, let us finish our report. We'll get it to you. You take it from there. And that, that's what they did a few weeks ago or six weeks ago. And well, then the AG is... It's all over his teeth, toes, and fingernails. I heard there were some serious problems with corrupted files that allegedly had been in the possession of Doug Logan for months, and he allegedly didn't know they were corrupted, but they were key files because they were images, scanned images of the ballots or something like that. And the person that found out was shocked that Doug had not known that months earlier. So, I, listen, I don't know the details. What I do know is that there are concerns about how Doug handled the audit. Doug yeah, was in know. my house with Mike Flynn. I don't know what he was doing. And so I have concerns about what Jim Penrose. Do you know Jim? I love Jim. I thought Jim was a fine Christian man. I've had information now since in the last two or three weeks. That Doug, Jim Penrose may not be who he purported himself to be. I know he was with NSA. That's all I knew. I, I don't listen. I, I Maybe I made the mistake of letting everybody come down here and take advantage of my hospitality no it was great it was great that you did that and it was it was super useful I